So as we all know by now, I love playing Twisted Metal ripoffs almost as much as I love playing Twisted Metal games. This is one called Dead in the Water that I first noticed years ago. Looked it up on YouTube and promptly deemed it too bad to be worth showing off. I have changed my mind. Now that I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, Dead in the Water gets its time in the sun. And honestly, looking back on it and actually finally playing it for the first time, it's not as bad as it first seemed. It is by no means essential for your vehicular combat um, cannon, but I've dealt with worse. And I will deal with worse again, as I truly get into the dregs of car combat. Or I guess I should say vehicular combat, because we are not driving a car in this game. This is dead in the water, so we're driving boats. One thing that I think is cool about this game, it has the option to be a racing game, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. You can also just play it like Twisted Metal and battle, where the only goal is to kill everybody. The invitations arrived without return addresses. See if any of this sounds familiar after our Twisted Metal journey. The recipients were 13 of the most ruthless and outrageous boat drivers in the world. <laughs> you are one of them. On the front of the card was a skull and inside a message. In red print, it said, the rules are simple. Destroy everything. Followed by the location of the first battle. Quickly, you prepared your boat. Loading the guns, polishing the chrome on the engine. For years, rumors have circulated about a mysterious tournament that takes place once a year. It is also hinted that the organization holding the contest lies in the center of the Bermuda Triangle. The grand prize, if you survive, is the revelation of an age-old secret. Those who have competed before have never been seen again. Now it is your turn. From this moment on, you have only two choices. Win and get the prize, or end up dead in the water. It's exactly the same plot as Twisted Metal. And here are our contestants. As portrayed by a boardwalk caricature artist. Why do they have giant head proportions? Why do they make them such silly caricatures? We can also hear their voice clips. Yeah. There we go. Their wonderful 1998 voice clips. Some of them have direct Twisted Metal analogs. A lot of them have been ripped off in, say, uh, Rogue Trip or Critical Depth. The similarities to Critical Depth will be undeniable. But primarily they're going for a Twisted Metal ripoff. Or, I guess, occasionally a Vigilante 8 ripoff. I think Vigilante 8 came out before this. It's 1998. So it's a bit unclear where specifically this falls. It's pretty late. Twisted Metal 4 came out in 1999. But I also learned that Vigilante 8 came around pretty late, so... Baywatch reference. Never gets old. And the goth girl, who, for some reason... I'm up for it. Her entire character ends up just being that she's British. She doesn't have anything goth to say. And there are a lot of voice clips in this game. She ends up just being British, so I... am not gonna play as her. I'm gonna play as Dr. Graves. Yes, Dr. Graves. 
not to be confused with any other characters who have a prefix and a name starting with GR. Just don't even worry about it. The Dr. Graves. That's Mortician Henry Graves, and he was killed in last year's competition. This year, a creature calling itself Dr. Graves has appeared at the tournament. Coincidence? Probably not. He created personalized coffins for each of this year's drivers. With the fires of hell burning in his eyes, Dr. Graves intends to make those who wronged him rest in pieces. So an interesting thing about this game is that the tournament is presented in a horrifically inefficient manner. And we'll get into that in a moment, but I'm not going to start the tournament fresh. I'm going to load, not the settings. Settings are already loaded. I am going to load a tournament in progress. Right over here. Prepared for just such a purpose. It is Battle 6 of 6 in Season 2. And we are far out in first place. 23 to 16. Meaning we have won Season 2. And we get to participate in Season 3. Season 3 is the final season. Mercifully. Otherwise we would be here all day. And we're headed to the Arctic. We also get to buy permanent upgrades for our vehicle, which is certainly a choice. Going through the first two seasons, I maxed out weapons and armor. And I think I bought one of each other upgrade. And then we can just buy weapons so that we can start with weapons if we want. They're very, very cheap. And for some reason, you could buy fuzzy dice. They don't even show up in your rear view mirror. They're just... A waste of money, but they only cost 20 bucks if you were to purchase them. Hence why my money ends in 80, because I purchased them immediately. All right, on to the Arctic. Eventually, load times are pretty bad. And I'm playing this on PS3. I actually bought a copy of this game. Foolishly. Should have just emulated. All of our movement is controlled with the D-pad. Although Square does uh, enable um, sharp turns, which is pretty important. We've got Dave. Not sure what Dave's character is all about, but we'll get to we'll get to know him because enemies are not re-rolled. They are rolled per season. So we will fight the same enemies for the entirety of Season 3. I was fighting different enemies back in Seasons 1 and 2. But for some reason, we're just stuck with uh, these, these three guys for the remainder of the game. There we go. Combos are a big way to deal additional damage. Ah, it's Didgery Dave. I recognize him now. Yep, he's dead. And tragically, we'll see him a lot. You can get some bonus cash, rogue trip style. And sink the Titanic. That's one of the few actual destructibles in this game, I'm now realizing. Those are actually kind of few and far between. Not entirely sure why there's totem poles. The Arctic is not especially well known for those.
The remaining enemies inexplicably have not left this area back here. So the first season was the first three levels of the game. The second season was those same three levels in the same order. And then three more levels. And then the third season is all nine levels of the game. In the same order. Okay, we can't get out here. And the enemies did finally leave. They tricked me. But there's a health refill. So ultimately, I'm glad that I took this detour. We will advance to the next round, whether or not we win. Which is where the points come in. We are actually competing for points more than anything else. And if we don't have enough points to win the season, we will not get the prize. Such as it is. The major failing of this game, of course, is the voice work. There are not very many voice clips, and they will play constantly. Every time we take damage, Dr. Graves will shout, I will live forever. It gets old fast. I do not appear to have gotten credit for killing that guy. Should be a pop-up every time I kill somebody. My weapon down in the lower right has a little, like, sparkle on it. That means I have a special prepared. Special is... Twisted Metal Black Dark Side. You charge at an enemy. Crash into him. Deal a bunch of damage. I'm already sick of JB. And there's a lot more JB to come. Yeah, it's gonna throw those same enemies at us as we enter a new level. A level I've already had to complete twice in this very campaign. Plenty of results screens. More than we need. I did get a lot of money. Gives me access to any upgrade of my choosing. Let's go acceleration for literally no reason. Armor is by far the most important upgrade to get, especially as enemies get more aggressive. Each season does seem to make the enemies more difficult. The first season was absolutely trivial. It was almost impossible to lose. Get ready. But these later seasons, enemies just get kind of obnoxious. Though we can't see all the levels on the lower seasons, so here we are. This is also the lowest difficulty level. It's weird that there are seasons that increase the difficulty and manually adjusted difficulty levels. And that's the power of combos.
if you max out your combo damage, just consistently keep an enemy in your sights and pump missiles into them. Each consecutive missile will deal increased damage, significantly increased damage, resulting in very quickly dead opponents. Torpedoes are pretty powerful, to say the least. I don't know why Dave and the buffed twins really just stood there and let me kill them. But it is making this go very, very efficiently. And supposedly this is the Grand Canyon. It doesn't have a lot of markers of pretty much anything. Waterfalls you can freely travel up or down. It may as well be just flat road. This, I believe, is a shield. Yep, there it is. Sonic the Hedgehog shield. I'm out of weapons, but my machine gun is maxed out, so it does actually deal a lot of damage. If we can get sustained hits. We carry weapons between levels, so I should probably get a few of them. Right now I am being pulled over, which I assume is what JB's special is. Man, his AI pattern is irritating. He's just constantly running away. Wasting time. Oh my god, JB, what the hell? You're not gonna win. Actually, he could. He's quite capable of getting the same combos that we have. And he has infinite ammo. So I have been, like, instantly killed from half or better HP. Which is pretty annoying when that does happen. It's very unlikely though, so... Can't say I'm worried about it. We've got... 7,500. That's enough for the final acceleration upgrade. Not that I really need it. But we are going to the speedway. Might as well be speedy. Whoosh. We can sell upgrades back. They're worth less than when we purchased them. So I would never do that. The upgrade system is very, very basic. So there's really no reason to ever do that to yourself. Unless you inexplicably did not prioritize armor. This is such a racing game thing. Where you start off having to wait for permission to play the game. And Dave's dead. Entire HP bar gone in one combo. Secretly, I love that about this game. It's not good design. In fact, it's terrible design. But it is fun. Kill JB. Get him out of here. JB still has HP. Not anymore, though. And there we go. <laughs> That's how the levels can go. That one was just a figure eight, so it's not like we missed anything. But a speedrun of this game would pretty much blow Twisted Metal out of the water. Appropriately enough. You just have to get pretty lucky. And also, you'd have to play through the first two seasons that are a complete waste of your time.
I don't have enough money to buy the engine upgrades. Thus, we are just moving on. Soon my vehicle will be maxed out, and then I guess I'll just buy weapons between levels so that I can get very fast combos and then just wrap up the levels immediately. Which will kind of ruin the whole point of this playthrough, which is to show off the levels. What can you do? This game comes pretty ruined. Like I said, though, this is not a terrible vehicular combat game. The sound design is terrible. The music is fine. I like the times when I can tell that one of the songs is just a blatant parody, basically, of an actual popular song. This is not one I recognize. This wave pool weapon, it just sends out a wave. As far as I know, it doesn't deal any actual damage. And we have invisibility. I have not been using my special. So, bam. We don't want to die because we would lose a lot of points from dying so early. Ah, I've only got one weapon left. All the game really cares about is the order in which vehicles die. So even if we're in second place, that's fine. We do have turbo as well. Hmm. That didn't go well. But it was fast. Sometimes dying is nice and fast. The health refills actually recover like half of your HP and are usually very frequently respawning. Uh, we got basically no money there. At least I didn't die first. The Australian guy did die before me. So what I should really do is just prioritize JB. Make sure he gets the least amount of points. Get ready. All we gotta do is not get beaten by any of the enemies. And we will still win the tournament. There's the Nitro pickup. That's Dave. Dave's not hurting anybody. However, outrunning enemies is close to impossible. Because they have infinite turbo. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Dying for a shield combo, but of course, that does not exist in this game. This level has two health refills. I know the Speedway has at least three, which makes it one of the easiest levels in the game. Despite being at the end of Season 1.
I've never seen an enemy actually get one of the health refills, so I'm not worried about that. But I am worried about getting them myself. I'll take a shield, that's for sure. Health refills on this level are around the outside. I know from having played this level twice already. There's one. They are losing relative efficacy. As my maximum HP has increased significantly. But there's the other one. All set. Should have this one no problem, except the JBs being ridiculous. Literally running circles around me. Wasting time, as usual. Yeah, if you played this game as a race, which I'd never have bothered to do, but it is basically a kart racer when you do that. Although I believe eliminations are permanent. Which does technically meet my requirements for a vehicular combat game. All that really matters is that if you die, you stay dead. That goes for you and the opponents. Well, like I said, I've never played the, um, the race mode. So I wouldn't know. I will actually take some of these. Literally $100 per missile, but I do have money to spare. After this level, assuming I do well, we will have nothing but money, because we'll have every upgrade in the game. Then between levels, I can just max out my inventory. Kill everyone who has a problem with me. And Loch Ness, famous for its castles, I assume, based on this very accurate video game. If I could get JB killed early on, that'd be a huge advantage. Because he would lose a ton of points. Instead, I'm about to die. Yeah, he's got strategies of his own, it looks like. There we go. He's the first one down. Now, if I come in first, I will surge way ahead of him. Pretty much insurmountably, because I think this is the sixth of the nine levels we have to beat. Yeah, let's make Didgery Dave second or first place. Because he has no chance of winning. The monster's here. Hi, the monster. If this were a Twisted Metal game, the monster would kill you. As far as I can tell, the monster is not going to kill me. Although I am filled with a... Yeah, there it is. A sense of dread. Because aquatic things are actually kind of scary. Just in general. Even in this non-horror game, the fact that we are in the water fills me with a sense of helplessness. And if a monster decides to attack me, what am I going to do? I'm going to die horribly. 
Lovecraft was right. As always, water scary. I believe that was his epitaph. Oh, uh, Dave's running away now. This is like reverse Mr. Grimm AI. Where Mr. Grimm will suddenly become aggressive when he's the last enemy. Seems like in this game, whoever's the last enemy will refuse to fight. Forever. Oh, health refill. I will take that and ensure my victory. But this is ridiculous. Honestly, at this point, I should just wait for Dave to come around. Because he's gonna. Got a combo on his way down. I don't know what is spinning around his vehicle. Presumably his special. Thankfully, we're not going to see any of the more obnoxious specials. Like, for example, the hillbillies turn you into a chicken. Which means you cannot attack for like 15, 20 seconds. Seems like JB does the same thing, but only for like five seconds, if that. Yeah, that gave us a gigantic points boost. We are in good shape, but we're going to Hong Kong. Let's see how this Hong Kong compares. Twisted Metal's Hong Kong. I'm sure it will be favorable. There, everything's maxed out. No reason to do anything with money except buy a bunch of weapons. Really wish there were an option to mute the voice clips. The music is adequate, the explosions and whatever, they're fine. The voice clips are so irritating. I tried playing as the goth girl, and it's completely unbearable. She never stops saying pointless British things. Dave dead immediately. And he called me a bloody dingo. Is bloody a thing that Australians say? They probably don't go out of their way to avoid saying it or anything, but I don't think it's a specific Australianism. There it is, Hong Kong in all its glory. It has an airport on the sea. Considering the fact that there is the goth girl who is also defined by Britishness, they probably should have stuck with exclusively Australian sayings for the Australian character, not given him additional Britishisms. Pretty sure that boat is hurting me when I touch it. I have absolutely no idea where the health refills are in this level. I've never played this level before. Because there's only so much preparation I was willing to do for dead in the water. No one's even going to end up watching this because we're getting into the real car combat shovelware. Hopefully I won't need all three fills. I do honestly kind of like the music. It's about as generic as it could possibly be. But it is generic in the way that I like. That's the end of you. Raging Baby. I think I mentioned that all the the movement control is done with the D-pad. So like you hold forward to go forward and 
If you want to turn in any sort of reasonable radius, you hold square while turning. And that is the only real complicating factor. Our machine gun is triangle. And our, um, our actually fired weapons are circle. So basically, I'm holding triangle the entire time I'm playing the game. And occasionally switching over. Or like, pressing my thumb. Rolling it over. Onto the circle. And of course, the square. Looks like I probably won't have to waste my time with bad weapons anymore. We'll just stick with the missiles that are very, very easily comboed into themselves. For ridiculous damage. Which is a mechanic that was also in Vigilante 8. So it might have taken that from Vigilante 8. However, in Vigilante 8, you cannot combo weapons with themselves. You have to weave of multiple weapon types. The fact that you can just use the same weapon, get all the combos you want, makes this game quite a bit easier. They probably should have balanced the whole combo thing. I like this carnival environment. Dying devil head. Just casually drive through hell. For some reason, I suspect that there's a health refill somewhere in here. Ultimately, though, the levels are quite samey. Their unique elements really don't add much of anything. Swerve just slightly. Nice. I rarely seem to land those grenades, but... When they do hit, they are devastating. They've got sort of a napalm arc, but even if you're point blank, they will not hit your target. You actually have to land them at the landing point of the grenade. You do have a bit of a blast radius, it seems, but not always easy to manipulate. I'm so far ahead. I think I can just lose this next battle completely. Oh, wait, it's the boss. Surely the boss will have to be beaten properly. In fact, just in case I'm going to save. Wouldn't want to, like, get screwed out of being able to complete the game. Simply because I failed to defeat the boss. So a little safety save. I think we're ready for the boss. Who could possibly be the boss of Dead in the Water? I'm guessing the giant skull logo from the opening title screen. As a vehicle. But it could also be a UFO. Definitely going to max these out. They've been my bread and butter. Take one of those. I'll max out all my missiles. Why not? Money has no value at this point. Let's find out if any boss can handle Dr. Graves. Oh, there are four or five enemies here? Wasn't expecting that.
We got Crash Planes. Because it's the Bermuda Triangle. Looks like these vehicles are... Or at least this one is. A UFO of some description. Take that drone. Dirty, filthy mammal. Dirty, filthy mammal. Probably should have saved some of my missiles. I don't have much left for the boss at this point. Another drone down. I'm pretty sure I saw Dave listed as the, one of the enemies up in the upper left. Perhaps I was just wishful thinking. Missing that Dave. I'm pretty sure the Bermuda Triangle is in no way volcanic. But what do I know? Maybe that's been its secret all these years. Not a lot for pickups. It's kind of a cheap way to make the final level harder. Oh no. Yeah, we can't lose. Then we won't get our special ending. Gotta see what the secret of the universe is. And that can only be done by killing aliens. Yep. Lost the alien invaders in Bermuda. Bones will rot with the wreckage of your boat in the Triangle. Good thing I saved. And we saw the bad ending. Now let's see if I can get the good ending. After navigating through so many completely unnecessary menus. Max that out. R. I kind of want to hear all the characters' voice clips, but not enough to go back and play any of those other characters. Especially because the first two seasons are a complete waste of time. Get ready. Yeah, looks like it only takes four missiles and some machine gun fire. As long as I get a combo going to kill any of these drones. There's my combo, and there's the dead drone. And there's the boss. They just do devastating damage to the boss, but it is still alive. I wonder what happens if I kill it before the rest of the drones. Do I then have to go clean up the drones? Nope. A win is a win. The drones just take up space. Now are we going to get an actual cutscene? And it will, will it be specifically tailored to Dr. Graves and his very interesting story of being a zombie?
I get declared too good. But what's the secret to the life, the universe, and everything? Is it 42? Okay. Dr. Graves leaves a trail of burnt bodies and devastated landscapes behind him. After raising Bermuda to the ground, he disappears into the darkness and is never seen again. Rumors of a ghostly green figure that attacks wayward ships circulate on all the oceans of the world. This is not the secret of the universe. This is just Dr. Graves is an asshole. Very disappointing ending. Now, tragically, for no discernible reason, my uh, Steam or uh, stream notifications did not pop up because Drecky gave 100 bits and said, Thank you for playing Tidal Metal. And indeed, that is the most appropriate ending we could possibly get for this game. Uninspired as it is. Oh god, more caricatures. Well, let's let this roll out. If it's just going to stay on these two characters, though, I'm skipping this. And it looks like it is just going to show the pirate and the cop. As it very, very slowly scrolls through the handful of people who made this game. It looks like it could have put every name so far on a quarter of the screen. Very, very easily. But they're really milking each and every person who worked on this thing. I might steal some of the songs for this game and put them in my Twisted Metal licensed song playlist. But this one is definitely not going to make the cut. Hmm. Yeah, I'm interested in checking out some other Steam car combat games. I will take that suggestion and almost certainly show that specific game off in the future, as is suggested in chat. But the people who aren't here right now don't get to see that suggestion. You'll have to wait until I've gotten around to that game. And there are plenty other vehicular combat games that I plan to get to in the near future. Most of them will be better than Dead in the Water. But like I said, I think this game is fine. Could he use better writing? Could he use the option to mute the horrible voice clips? But it's got some vision. Some good ideas. The constantly deforming environment because you're on the water. That's really fun and interesting. It actually does change up the way combat works quite a bit. That was a thing in um, Vigilante 8 as well. You could deform the environment in that game. But obviously not nearly as frequently as it occurs in Dead in the Water. Yeah, all in all, this was worth showing off. Hey, Mike Fisher got to play a dual role. He's that good. I have no idea who Marvin Medler is. If you like caricatures, this game certainly has them plentifully. So many caricatures to enjoy. And I am glad that the credits have additional caricatures. Because the game itself has one art piece for each character. You gotta beat the game to see the other ones. Twisted Metal 2 has two art pieces for each character. You get to see them both immediately. And our group shot. Presumably, this will be the final slide. 
I noticed that the artist Mike Fisher also voices Dr. Graves. I keep trying to call him Mr. Grimm for some reason. Freudian slip, I guess. And Marvin Medler. Maybe Marvin Medler is the, the smart Jimmy Neutron kid who is not in the full character cast list right now. Howard, I'll be back next week, Schwartz. Executive producers are lazy. We've all been there. I'm so sick of my executive producer, I'll tell you that much. Man, there are a lot of producers on this game. More than I would have thought. Player One Studios takes production very seriously. I imagine they would, because they're cranking out budget games. I don't know what other games they made. Oh, Mick Lost Soul is having some glitches in his name. And Rich Money Store Rosado, the namesake for that Death Grips album. Looks like this is all the characters we're going to get. They got lazy towards the end. I don't think we need to go through the special thanks or whatever else is stuck with us. Oh, the webmaster. They have such hilarious nicknames, though. I feel like I'm watching a Simpsons Halloween special. Look at that, JG. Laugh Riot. Okay, my time is short. <laughs> Twisted Marathon coming up this Sunday. Ridiculously enough. I have a lot of preparation to do. I will probably stream additional Twisted Metal games throughout the week. So as to practice and not utterly humiliate myself during the marathon. They're crediting their voices again. This is ridiculous. There's only, like, four voice clips per character. We do have Endo to thank for the halfway decent music. And these guys as well. There we go. Skip the credits. No more credits. And our difficulty settings. Cabin Boy, Captain, or indeed Admiral. I am more than satisfied with my experience playing Dead in the Water. Thanks for joining me, if indeed you have. See you for more vehicular combat in the very near future. And have yourselves a good one.